fast martial arts weapon lesson, you're going to be training with your nunchaku or your nunchucks. Grab a pair, start with it in your palm facing up, your right hand. You're going to turn forward, get this spinning motion. Very simple, it's a small move. Just in the palm of your hand, your palm is facing up, turn your palm down and continue with that same exact turn. You're just kind of pushing it kind of like you're churning a little bit. Palm up, palm down, and then you're gonna put those together. And now you have your figure eight. You're gonna do this figure eight in front of your body first. Start slowly if you have to, and then you can start to speed it up when you're ready. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. But again, you're gonna start here, palm up, palm down, up, down. And when you do it this way, you're gonna pick it up so much faster. I taught this particular weapon to hundreds and hundreds of students. Maybe, th probably thousands, I'm sure it's thousands. Anyway, they pick it up very fast when we start it this way. Spinning it this way, palm up, palm down. This is a forward figure eight or forward rotation. When you're just doing one spin, we call this an orbital, palm up, palm down. Start to go up and down. And now again, you're in your figure eight. Try to slow it down, also known as an infinity spin or an endless spin. And a lot of your moves are gonna come out of this spin. So you wanna get this one down first. Now go back into the first hand and we started here pushing, you're just gonna pull. So you're pulling it back towards you. Now you're in the reverse. Awesome, thank you, thanks for saying that. I appreciate your watching and learning. Palm down. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Palm up. I tell people that all the time. They ask me, um, especially friends who don't live here, they say, hey, I wanna get my kid into it or I'm thinking about taking classes. What do I look for in a good martial arts school? I say it's all the instructor. If you can't, if you don't like the instructor, if they weird you out, there's something strange about them, something doesn't feel right, or you just don't like them, you're not gonna learn very well. So try to find an instructor. You wanna make sure the school's clean, stuff like that. That's really important, right? But mostly, is the instructor somebody I would hang out with? Not that you want him to be your friend or her to be your friend, but something you could, somebody you could respect, right? Palm up, palm down. Two places to get nunchucks, three really. You can get foam nunchucks from Amazon, places like that online. You can get these kind of metal nunchucks. This is from a company called XMA. Um, yeah, hopefully this will be over soon and hopefully they'll survive because a lot of schools are not going to survive this shutdown. I know, so I hate to say it, but it's true. Anyway, so you can get foam nunchucks. So you're just pulling, right? Pulling from Amazon. But if you want to get a pair of metal or wood, I would go to um, a martial arts supply company like KarateMart.com. CenturyMartialArts.com, that's where these come from. I don't think they make these anymore. These are so old. Um, but places like that. The best place, and the place I got my first, second, third, fourth, fifth pair, is you make your own. You get a nice dowel rod, 36 inches. That's about 36 inches. Get it from Amazon, get a dowel rod. It'll cost you five or 10 bucks. If you can go to like, um, if you have a hardware store near you, you can get one from a hardware store, get one that's about an inch in diameter, cut it in half, drill a hole on each side. Maybe we'll make, we'll make a video, I'll show you how to make your own. Drill a hole in there, get some cotton string, and then you thread it back and forth two or three times, you tie a little knot, and you have your first pair. That's where I would go. If I were you, you wanna get a good pair of nunchucks, start there. All right, go back into this figure eight, because I wanted to show you the wrist roll today. I might need, let me adjust this camera a little bit. It's a little low. I shouldn't have to squat so much. But I wanted you to see my hands. Ah, now it's too high. Hold on. Appreciate your patience. All right, so you have your figure eight. Now this is my right hand, and there's an orbital here. There's an orbital here, that's where we started. When you come to the inside on that orbital, 
you're going to simply open your hand, stay here, and allow it to flip into your hand here. Now you have this is called a negative grip. From here, you continue with your figure eight. When you get on the same side, right hand, right side, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to flip over your hand. You open your hand, and you allow it to flip into your hand. So you're here, open the hand. You're now in this negative grip. Continue your figure eight on the same side. So on the forward spin, this is the forward spin. On the inside of the body, you change the grip to the outside. If you lose it, pick it up. Don't expect not to drop it, especially, especially forever. <laughs> you're always going to drop it. And when you get better and you get faster, you're going to push yourself faster, and then you're going to drop it because you're going to get out of your comfort zone constantly in order to grow. You can't grow inside your comfort zone. So you're going to go here. We'll slow it back down. Figure eight. Wrist roll. Back into that negative grip. Wrist roll. Wrist roll. Wrist roll. If you want, the way I like to practice it, I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see this is still the front. I like to practice doing two or three spins. You can do a wrist roll and do two or three spins and then wrist roll back. So from here, spinning, spinning, and then, so I'll do it that way. That'll be like the warm up, my official warm up. Not that I have an official one, but one you can use, just figure eight. When you're ready, when you're ready, bring it back. And then do every two. Do that for about 30 seconds. And then go to every time you go to the other side, you're doing wrist roll to wrist roll. Wrist roll, wrist roll. All right, let's move on to some basic strikes for self-defense. In the right hand, just go up and down. When you come up, bring that elbow up. That puts it down here. Good to see you. Gradually increase your speed because you're practice striking. Now you're using this as a defensive weapon, right? You wanna reach out and touch somebody on the top of their head, or maybe it's their hand. You've got a knife, and all you have is two sticks connected with a string or a chain. You're going to use that leverage. And notice that I'm holding here at the end. I come from here and down. When I hold it at the end, that gives me the most striking power because of leverage. When I want speed, because I want to look fancy, I'm going to hold it closer to here. When I start to do this, I'm spinning. I want it to go fast. It always looks better from the side, by the way. From here, I want it to look faster and then drop it. You're going to hold here. So, so understand that. This is for speed, this is for maximum. Get them out of your face power, right? So from here, we're going up and down first, and then I want you to add this first basic angle just across, think of their temple to the cheek or the clavicle, or again, they've got something they're either trying to punch, grab, they've got a knife, a stick, knock it just straight out of the hand. So do that for about 30 seconds, down, over, down, over. Now from here, bring it back. So we're gonna make this triangle, starting with the right, right hand, right shoulder, across the body, across the body, and then back up. One, two, and back up, one. Now the camera's high, so I'm gonna do this right in the middle of my ribs, right below my nipple line or the chest line but you can also do it down here, down around your legs, just as a stylistic thing, right? From here, it's on this arm, leave it there for a second and just do this motion. Because I want you to isolate the wrist and understand that that wrist moves the chuck because the wrist, the hand is holding the chuck. And you have one, two, three joints. And that's three, di three different uh, distances. This is really small, small range, right? And then medium, using the elbow, and then a big range of motion using the shoulder. And you're gonna use those depending on the technique you're doing. Again, if it's a strike, 
You're using that whole arm to defend yourself. No matter what the strike is, you want to do that. From here, when we make it small, or if I want to go, I want to go fast, it's more, you can see, more of the elbow. The shoulder moves a little, but it's more elbow. And then if I just want to stand here and really go fast, try to keep it back a little bit, right? It's just going to be the wrist. You get all that speed from the wrist. And also notice that I choked up again and I went up there. But from here, back and forth on that upper arm. This is practice for you. 30 seconds, bring it back here. Reach the other hand across the front of the body and grab it. You'll have a tendency, you wanna go behind your back. That's the way your brain works. Fight that, it's counterintuitive. Go in front of your body, pull it. Now it's in the other hand. Start with your orbital, orbital. Go into your figure eight. And then throw in a wrist roll to a wrist roll. Practice that a little bit. You always want to do both sides of your body evenly and then go into your striking. And as I was striking, I don't know if you saw it, I walked my hand from here and walked it down to here. It's, it's as simple as that. I know it looks complicated. It's really not. Most things are not complicated in martial arts. They just look it because they're new or different. So I do that first basic strike, then I add that second that angle, and I wanna fight in front of my body. I always wanna keep all my strikes as close to my center line as I can. This out here usually is gonna miss the attack. Not only that, this is easily defendable. That first pair of nunchucks I told you about, I didn't actually make my first, first pair. Very first, first pair, the backyard. We had this above ground swimming pool, and there were these two punks in the neighborhood that were going around and they were um, throwing stuff in our pool at night because they didn't like me. I had four brothers. We were uh, different, you know, we were different in the neighborhood or whatever. And these kids would come and they would throw stuff in the pool at night. And my brother, he's really my uncle, but he's 11 years older or 11 months older. And this guy, I've never seen him, he doesn't flinch. He, he'll punch you straight in your face and he can take a punch straight in the face and he keeps fighting. He's one of the best fighters, just naturally. He's just wired that way, right? He's one of those scrawny guys. Uh, anyway, so he said, let's catch him tonight. And we did. So we waited for him. We were outside. They came in the backyard. I remember there was a little bit of snow on the ground. And the one guy, his name was Chris. And Chris he always wore black leather jackets. He thought he was a you know, rock and roll dude or whatever. And I can't remember how old we were. We were teenagers. And he's in there. And he's, and he's coming like this. And my brother punches him straight in the face. And he drops his chucks. My brother picks up the chucks and he bam, bam, bam. He hits him three or four times. He throws them to me and that's how I got my first pair. Now, I'm sure, you know, that was like a million years ago, right? But that's a true story. That's how I got my first pair. And then we looked at it. It was just a um, tomato steak. We grew up in a rural area. And you, you pound these tomato steaks in and you cut it. And then after that, man, we would make them all the time until we broke them because we just we reverse engineered it. Not that there was a lot to it, but that's what we did. So you can make your own, that's my point. Or if you have to fight somebody and they've got this big sloppy thing and they don't know what they're doing or they don't practice, take theirs away and then you have your own pair. Just don't hurt anybody for self-defense. We're talking about self-defense only. Be nice, be kind and all that other stuff, right? All right, so anyway, so you have down, up, and then Go and add that triangle. And I call this Bruce Lee's triangle because in all the Bruce Lee movies, when he starts messing with those nunchucks, this is one of his signature moves. And he throws in that loud, high-pitched scream or whatever, and then puts it in the other hand. Reaching across the body, grab it under your arm. And look at this, wherever I put that stick here, because that's attached, that's where this one's gonna go. If you don't wanna rack yourself across your spine, or in the back of your head, then watch where you point that. If this is always pointing to the ceiling, or the sky, or the ground, in other words, it's perpendicular, like a tree growing out of the ground, then you're never really gonna smack yourself in the back of the head like you think you might when you start to go in the opposite direction. When you start to do this, as long as you're turning it here, it's gotta go straight up. If your hand is straight up, and this is what you're gonna do, because I did this 
for years, and when I teach this, this is what I see almost 100% of the time for beginners. It's something about the way our brain works. We go like this, which means that their other hand goes like this, which means that they hit themselves every single time. And I have to hold their hand, like physically, hold it. Don't let it move, don't let it move. Put the chuck in your hand. And I know it seems super simple and it really is. That's all I'm doing. I just turn that like that. And look, it's gotta go there. Can't go anywhere else. It certainly can't go in your face, but you have to overcome what's natural, what's normal, um, instinctive. Your instinct is because you live in your brain too much. We all live in our head too much. We're like, we, we really exist out here, right? We exist out here and in here, but most of us only exist in here. Probably because you're looking at the ground, feeling sorry for yourself, walking around like this, thinking about too much stuff. What could happen? What could, not you, but you know what I mean, right? Control it. Point the stick where you want the other one to go. I call that Chuck Norris and Chuck the truck. Point Chuck Norris where you want Chuck the truck to go. And I know, a little corny, right? I don't care if it helps you remember it. Talk about not liking your karate instructor. Maybe you started talking about Chuck Norris. I don't know. Chuck the truck. I took over a martial arts school years and years ago. I used to wear all black uniforms. And it was a Korean instructor who had this much knowledge and skill as an instructor. But he had a lot of cash. And he was Korean. So people just assumed the guy's got to know a lot of Taekwondo. And then he took his certificate because he left it when he left and I took it over to the school. And it had his 10th uh, Don, he was 10th Don, or no, 8th, 8th Don. But I looked at it closely, you could see he cut out the number eight on a different piece of paper and glued it on his certificate. And I removed it, said third. But everybody loved him because he was Korean, had a heavy accent. He couldn't kick his way out of a wet paper bag. And that's not an exaggeration. Some of the worst kicks I've ever seen from a Korean ma uh, to master, right? Anyway, I took over the school, and one of his, his students who stayed around and, and came over with me, she said, why do you always wear black? Master Kim doesn't like black. And I said, well, Chuck Norris wore black. Remember, he had those movies. Good guys wear black. You probably don't remember, you guys are too young. Good guys wear black. It was my favorite movie growing up. Chuck Norris ran, jumped up in the air, did this flying sidekick through the windshield, and smashed the guy in the movies. And then another time, he jumps off the cliff, does a flying sidekick, knocks the guy off the motorcycle. Good guys wear black, that's my point. And she said, well, I, and she said, well, Master Kim doesn't like Chuck Norris. And I said, well, maybe Max, you know, Chuck Norris doesn't like Master Kim, I don't know. People are funny, but they get stuck in their head. All right, so from here, oh, and by the way, um, the funniest thing was, that Korean instructor, had so little skill and knowledge and ability to teach. He was an awful martial artist and an awful teacher and an awful person, I came to find out later. But because he was Korean, people said, it's gotta be the real deal. Don't fall for it, right? Sometimes they are. Sometimes you gotta look the part to play the part, but not always. Don't get stuck on that silliness. It's like when you go into a wonderful Chinese restaurant or a wonderful Korean or Japanese restaurant. Then you go in the back and the kitchen staff are all from Central and South America. The food still tastes delicious, but now you pull back the curtain like uh, the Wizard of Oz. You saw the truth and it just doesn't taste right. It's in your head, it's not real. All right, so let's finish with this. We're doing this motion. One, two, three, and I want you to switch. One, two, three. So this is the Bruce Lee triangle, right? You get it in the other hand. And this is a self-defense move. So when you do it, make sure you do it with force, speed, power, hit them, defend yourself, and then do the other side. But don't stop there. Go back to the outer orbital, pop it under your elbow, under your armpit, and then squeeze it. Orbital, pop it, oh, I missed it. Pop it and squeeze it. Spin, spin, pop it. All you're doing is you're starting to do that figure eight again, but when you come in, it's a little bit more of a turn. See that, and that puts it there. Remember wherever I point that, that goes. Then, as you're squeezing it, create tension, 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 and then release the tension into their face for self-defense. So one, two, three, bam, and you smash them, right? One, two, defend yourself. 
So that's another Bruce Lee movie move. From here, pop them. So go back into your figure eight, where we started with these wrist rolls. Do a couple of those, wrist roll, wrist roll, and then go into a striking combo. One, two, three, put it in the other hand. Spin, spin, catch it, tension, bam, pop them. And then go back in. Now you've got some combos to practice. Go back into this one. If you're ambitious, take your hand and stick it on your face like this, on the opposite side of your face. Your hand is there so you don't smack yourself in the eye. If your hand's on the wrong side of your face, you're gonna smack yourself in the eye. So remember this, if the chuck is in the right hand, your left hand goes on the right side of your face. The left hand goes on the right side, so it's always opposite. If you were in the other position, why am I making such a big point about this? Because you will smack yourself, either in the tooth, in the nose, in the eye, and I've done it. That's why. Thank you. And then you're gonna wrap it around the back of your neck. Now it's in the other hand. So these are all ways to get, you can also do throw it, catch it, not supposed to look at it, but it's been a little while. Go back to here, throw and catch. Go back to here, throw and catch. And we can work on that. But I want you to get this. Left hand, right cheek, and then horizontal. Wherever you point this, that's where the other one's gonna go. You're gonna want to do this for whatever reason. You're gonna point it at an angle and it's gonna hit you in the head and the shoulder. It's gonna hit you right on that shoulder blade, that hurts. From here, bring it around your neck in the back. As long as this hand is here and you get this horizontal parallel to the earth, it's gonna go into your other hand. But your brain's gonna be like, whoa, you're gonna be freaking out until you get it. Even if you've done it a while, even when I do it, the first time I like double, triple check, is the hand on the right side? Is it on the correct side of my face? Because if I don't, and I've seen it, and you'll do this, you're trying to catch it and you're going like this, and you smack yourself, and it, you're not gonna die. You're just gonna learn faster, right? Don't be afraid to get some bruises, especially in martial arts. If you're doing martial arts and you don't want to get bruises, cuts, bru uh, I'm not saying broken bones. I'm saying, you know, like uh, things that hurt for like a week and a half, like big lumps in your body. Maybe yours is a striking martial art. Maybe you're grappling, right? You get your knee twisted a little bit, get a little bit of a twist on the ear. Your eyes are black and blue or a little swollen. That's going to happen if you train. And if you're training martial arts, Tai Chi. I can't, I can't even do it slow enough. But if you train like some martial arts, there's no contact and it's all up here. And they think, you know, I'm learning this one technique, man, and it's gonna destroy the street fight. No, it's not. If you don't get in the ring and learn how to trade some punches, take a hit and move your body, move side to side, maybe throw a knee, a kick, an elbow, uh, learn how to stop that takedown, you're lying to yourself. You're gonna have to get hit a little bit. Yeah, it's happening everywhere. The gyms are closing, uh, martial arts schools. All right, so do this. Practice one side to the other, or the easier one. This is easier, by the way. Bring it this way to this way. But then, from here, put this up and try that. And then go around, add a couple of these, do some of these, some of these. Um, oh, I know what it was, the triangle triangle, the double spin, pop them, and then throw it in the other hand behind your back. And now you've got a whole bunch of techniques that most people can't do, but they're all super basic and super simple. Starting with, this is where it all starts. Get the orbital and understand it. Turn the hand over and understand that. And you can see, if I'm here, I'm not hitting my face. If I bring it in, there's no question I'm gonna hit my face. No, most places you can't. In most places, the police will see this as a weapon. Oh, let's do that. From here, bring it out. Just since we're talking Bruce Lee, here's another Bruce Lee. From here to here, here to here. So you're just bringing it back, create tension, keep the tension on it as you pull it out and push. From here, keep the tension and push. Um, if you know me, some of you know me, my favorite weapon of all time, street fight self-defense, has got to be the walking cane because it's a medical device and you're allowed to take it anywhere and everywhere. 
can take it on the bus, on the train, you can be standing in the park. You can have it if you drive, if you have a car, you can have it on the seat next to you in the car. If I take these right now in West Palm Beach, put them on my seat, and there's a police officer who comes and works at the gym every day and we talk about it and we joke. And I, and I asked him, I said, what would happen? And it wasn't these, it was collie sticks, which are even less of a threat in the mind of people who don't know. I would rather get hit in the face with one of these than with a collie stick. I'd rather get hit by one of these than with the cane, right? Oh, thank you, it's good to see you too. It's been a, a little bit, right? But the point is, in the movies, when these first came out, they, they never, nobody had ever seen them anymore. So all of these municipalities around the country and around the world, they said, let's ban the nunchuck. Just like they said, let's ban the throwing star. Because people are going to get killed with ninjas running around throwing throwing stars into people. But if you've ever thrown a throwing star, you know that they don't weigh enough. Even if you make them razor sharp, they're only going to go in like this thick or this much. If you have a big hunting knife and you know how to throw it, you can stick it through the guy's front and it'll come out his back. If you have a pole with a needle on the end, you can stick that through somebody and that's more dangerous than a throwing star or the nunchuck. I gotta pick up the nunchuck. But when people saw these, they said, oh, we gotta ban the nunchuck. People are gonna go around street fighting. The gang's gonna have the nunchuck. But the reality is the gang's all got guns and then you know, I'd much rather be beaten by one of these than shot five or six times or stabbed 38 times and have all my guts lacerated and they can't put them back together. But you ask, can you carry those in the street? Probably not. Uh, most police officers will see this as a violent weapon and if you have a weapon on you, then that proves intent. You intend to go out and get in a fight. If you're walking with your walking cane, there's not, no intent there. Yeah, so where, uh, where are you? It depends on where you are. If you're in the United States and they ship to your state, I think California, New York, maybe, there's some restrictions still. California's got some of the dumbest laws against weapons that I've ever seen. I mean, you can't get a bow staff, you can't get most of the collie sticks, half the really cool things, that, I mean, they're really innocuous, right? But, but um, you can buy an AK-47. It's just stupid, but anyway. Some states you can't ship them to, but if you get uh, Asian World of Martial Arts, awma.com, if you go to centurymartialarts.com, um, karatemart.com, all those are all one words. Those all sell different versions of these. This is a speed chuck, and I wanna show you real quick so you know. Since you asked, you might be interested in getting your own pair. Look at the difference in the length of the chair, the chain. This is a speed chuck. That means this is designed for demonstrations, for movies, for cool stuff like that, right? This we call a dinosaur chuck because it's the old style and they're so heavy. Now the dinosaur sort of stuck. Yeah, I don't want to get in politics or whatever, but there are some pretty silly laws there. They stifle business. That's why everybody keeps leaving. Um, but it's longer. Which means, for self-defense, street fight, this is the one of choice. You don't want the speed chuck. But you're, and it's not good or bad, it's different. It's just a different purpose. This one is that dinosaur chuck. You can still do all of the same moves. You just have to learn and adjust. I've got a whole bunch of drumsticks. I got, I teach drumming. Did you guys know that? I teach drum, not like uh uh, college drumming, professor drumming. I teach ball drumming, Ta the taiko style, the Japanese with the big sticks. So yes, I know what you mean. And I practice Kali with the drumsticks on the drums sometimes. So you're, uh, you know, you're barking up the right tree. All right. Well, yeah, but in Alabama, and this is also a true story, I also visited all white restaurants. There's, they still have whites only restaurants and blacks only restaurants in parts of Alabama. Now, Birmingham, you go to Birmingham, big new metropolis, and the racism there is it's more overt, it's more out in the open or whatever. And again, I'm not getting into politics. Um, yeah, we'll do a Joe Staff video today. But my point, you know, Alabama, Georgia, anywhere south of the Mason-Dixon line, the laws are a lot different. There's a lot more open carry. That doesn't mean that they're more conservative. 
That just means that, you know, there are a lot more country people who um, have guns. I've got a brother who lives there, and he's got an arsenal just outside of uh, Birmingham. But when I did some charitable work way down close to the, um, to the Gulf, there was st and we flew in in this private plane, and the guy I was with, I said, now we're going to go visit this whites-only restaurant, and then we're going to meet these guys for whatever this thing we were doing. And they're like, that doesn't, he, he refused to believe it until he saw it with his own eye, which was like me. You see it with your own eyes, then it starts to make sense. And, uh, you know, you talk about third world, you know, that kind of, and that kind of overt racism, I think, just destroys everything. But anyway, I'm staying out of politics, I'm staying out of politics, because all that matters is that you and I make a connection and that you take care of your family and you can provide for your family. And the media is going to try to keep us polarized and at each other's throats, and it distracts us from what's really going on. So instead, we get our weapons and we just train. I'm going to look up your question on the Joe staff and try to respond, but i got to get going now. It's beautiful here, and I want to run on the beach. So I'll be back after I run on the beach real quick, and I'll see you guys in a little bit.